Welcome to the land we live on. How it got to be that way. The story begins with the birth of the solar system. The solar system was born out of dust. Particles of dust in space clung together more and more, some of them from a nearby exploding star. One accretion of dust and rock, the sun, became large enough to start an atomic reaction. From gas swirling around the sun, the planets were formed. Water was a part of the chemical makeup of some minerals of the earth. As the earth cooled, these minerals released their water, enough to create the oceans. Even today, the amount of water in water-carrying minerals within the earth is more than the amount of water in the oceans. The golden brown crystals in this microscope photo contain about 4% water. Geologists reasoned that meteorites discovered on earth are the same age as the rest of the solar system. The geologists can measure the age of these meteorites by measuring radioactive decay of certain elements. In this way, they have determined that the age of the solar system is four and a half billion years old. About a half a billion years ago, pieces of the Earth's crust, some small, some large, began to collide forming, after millions of years, a single continent, which geologists call Pangaea. Then, millions of years later, Pangaea began to separate. The separation caused coastal crust to collapse. The stretching also caused the Earth's crust to split, creating separate blocks. Sometimes these separate blocks sank downwards into the Earth, creating basins, Simultaneously, other blocks rose upwards, creating new mountains. Since that time, separate blocks within the tectonic plates have moved up, down, and horizontally. Masses of rock have been squeezed, pulled apart, tilted up, and tilted down. The blocks, some of which are still moving, can be hundreds of miles long and miles wide. Ones that move horizontally can move miles out of place. One reason for this movement has been the crashing together of tectonic plates, or on the other hand, the moving apart of tectonic plates. It seems the blo that blocks also move deep inside the earth. Another reason for the movement has been the wearing away over millions of years of huge mountain ranges down almost to a level, causing an imbalance in weight among pieces within the tectonic plates. Another reason has been the weight and then the release of weight of glaciers as they formed and then melted. The ice in glaciers was sometimes miles thick causing the crust of the earth to be pushed down. When the ice melted, the earth rebounded. Geologists say that, is, that it is still rebounding in places. Another reason for the movement of these blocks is a change in the earth's axis of rotation. The tilt toward or away from the sun is now 23 and a half degrees. But over millions of years, this tilt has varied from 21 and a half degrees to 24 and a half degrees. Mass in the Earth shifts to accommodate the change. The basin that we call Death Valley has been displaced 19,000 feet from its original higher position. Florida the Atlantic coast and the Gulf Coast were all at one time on the sea bottom and then were uplifted. The tectonic plates continue to move at a rate of up to eight inches per year in the more active regions. The North American plate is moving westward. 
a small tectonic plate on the ocean floor off the coast of Oregon and Washington, called the Juan de Fuca Plate, is moving eastward. Because it is heavier than the North American Plate, it is moving down under the North American Plate. The Mount St. Helens eruption was caused by the Juan de Fuca Plates moving underneath the North American Plate. This movement opens up spaces in the Earth's crust into which mol molten rock can rise. Sometimes such molten rock hardens underground, forming granite, such as the granite now exposed at Yosemite National Park. Various parts of North America, including the Atlantic and Gulf Coasts, the middle section of the United States, and much of the Far West, were submerged underwater for millions of years at a time. At one time, as much as 70% of the continent was submerged. When land is underwater, particles in the water fall to the bottom, and over millions of years can form a thick layer. Then, maybe because of a rising of the sea floor, the water drains away, and what was at the bottom becomes dry land. Then water covers the land again, and new particles fall to the bottom and build up. Under moderate pressure from overlying land and water, and from moderate heat inside the earth, or by natural cementation from substances in groundwater, these particles can turn to rock such as limestone, sandstone, and shale. This rock, sedimentary rock, can be a mile or more thick. Hard rock forms a cap on many monuments, protecting the underlying soft rock from eroding. With pressure and heat inside the earth, rock can be compacted and hardened and chemically altered, forming metamorphic rock, such as marble, quartzite, and slate. The North American continent is tilted in several directions. Water in the Mississippi River runs downhill all the way from Minnesota to Louisiana. It drains a huge area all tilted toward it. The water carries particles with it, particles eroded from the land. These particles are deposited downstream stream on river and lake bottoms, banks, floodplains, deltas, and borders of the continent. Under the water bordering the continent, there is an apron of particles, the continental shelf, and beyond the shelf there is more apron, the continental slope. This wedge of sediments off the Atlantic coast thickens in some places to thousands of feet. The sand on ocean beaches came from the inside the continent. It is mostly quartz, originally in rocks. The churning of ocean currents and waves rising onto the beach has broken rocks into grains and has sorted the grains, washing heavier particles downhill out along the continental shelf and farther along the continental slope. Erosion is the name of the process that causes pieces of rock or soil to break away or be dissolved. It occurs in two ways, mechanical erosion and chemical erosion. With mechanical erosion, particles are chipped or washed away by sandstorms, the freezing of water in crevices and moving water, which weakens the cement holding grains of rock together. With chemical erosion, water dissolves the cement between grains or dissolves rock or metal. Mountains in what is now North America were once enormous, twice the height of what they are now. They have been eroded down to their present size. The bits of rock from the mountains washed down hillsides into streams and rivers were deposited sometimes thousands of miles away. Volcanoes over millions of years in North America have left behind much evidence. Much of the states of Washington, Oregon, and Idaho is underlain by enormous coatings of lava some two miles thick. North America has been greatly changed by glaciers which carry forward rocks and rubble and also gouge out holes in the ground such as the beds of the Great Lakes. When a glacier stops moving and starts to recede it leaves behind huge accumulations of rock and soil. Cape Cod and Long Island were formed in this way.